So here we have a function x, which is a of t squared times b of t. a and b are some generic functions, and t is here because um, t usually stands for a variable called time. Okay, for so a and b, and therefore x, are some functions of time. And if we are talking about functions of time, then we are often interested in growth rates because they tell us something about how a variable or how a function changes through time. So what we need is how x changes with t, so dx over dt. So if t moves on by one unit, what happens? But then we divide that by x, and that gives us a growth rate. And when we deal with time, we often call dx over dt, we call that x dot. And that's just a notational issue. And when we get that, the first derivative over the function itself, we call that the growth rate. So let's see in this example what the growth rate of our function x is. So first we need dx over dt, or x dot. Here we have a product, that function x is a product of a t squared and b t. So a t squared prime, so what we need is a t squared prime times b t plus a t squared times b t prime. The only thing that we are yet to dissolve here is this part here. What's the derivative of a t squared? And that's 2 a t times a prime t using the chain rule here. So remember, a of t and b of t are just some generic functions in practice. That could be any particular function. So that's that derivative, then times b t plus uh, on the right hand side. We basically just have a t squared times b prime t, and that comes, that's the second summand from the product rule. So what we now want is the growth rate, which is x dot over x. So let's in the numerator we will just replicate what we have already for x dot. This is this entire term, and then we divide this by x. So what is x? Here we basically replicate the function up here. So that's a t squared times b t. So we could finish here. Uh, but we could see whether we can somehow uh, simplify this. So if you look at this, a t squared and b t, in both the summons we have something that almost includes that a t squared and b t. Not exactly, but I think we can possibly expand to get there. So what we are now shooting for is to factor out from the denominator a t squared times b t, because then we can cancel that uh, sorry, we want to factor that out in the numerator because then we could cancel that with the denominator. So now we have these two summons, the green one and the red one. So what we need now here in the parenthesis in the green bit and the red bit is whatever multiplied with this factor out here gives the original green bit or the original red bit. So that will be 2 times a t to the negative 1 times a prime t. So what we have altogether is 2 times a t times a prime t times b t. So that works out. You may have to write that down yourself to just confirm that. Uh, but a t squared times a t minus 1 is just a t. Let's look at the red summand. We have the a t squared factored out also need factored out the bt. We don't have a bt, so we multiply with bt minus 1, and then these cancel out, and we have bt prime. That allows us to cancel these terms out, and what we are left with is 2 a t to the negative 1 times a prime t plus bt to the negative 1 times b prime t. And we could just write that as 2 times a prime t over a t plus b prime t over b t. And so what we have is basically 2 times the growth rate of so the growth rate of a plus the growth rate of b. We started out with x being a function of a t and b t. We turned out that the growth rate of x is a function of the growth rate of a and the growth rate of b.
So here's an example of a function x being a function of a, t, and b, t. Now we also have these three constants, a, alpha, and beta. Again, we want to find out the, the rate of change of x with respect to, to, uh, to the variable time, uh, and then eventually we'll calculate the growth rate. So here we have a product again, and we can get that factor a just outside, that's a constant. So we need the derivative of this product. So let's start with derivative of the green bit, that's alpha times a t to the alpha minus one times using the chain rule a prime t. Then plus just b t to the beta. So that's the first part of the product rule. The green bit here is the first derivative of that green part. And then the second part, so we have just first a t to the alpha, and now the derivative of the red function, and that will be, I'll need a bit more space, that will be beta times b t to the beta minus one times b prime t, uh, again using the chain rule here. So that's the change of x with respect to time, or x dot, and let's calculate the growth rate by dividing that through with x. So let's just uh, replicate what we have here. And b t plus, uh, and the second summoned a t to the alpha, beta, b t to the beta minus one uh, times b prime t, and that's a square bracket missing. And then in the denominator, we have x, which just a times a t to the alpha, b t to the beta. So how can we simplify this? It looks pretty messy as it is. We'll possibly try to apply more or less the same trick as in the previous example. We will see if we can factor out what we can then cancel with the denominator. So we'd love to factor out a times a t to the alpha b t to the beta, and then times something. And in the denominator, we have the same a times a t to the alpha b t to the beta. And if we could write it like this, we could then cancel out these two terms. So what do we need to write in the square parenthesis to make this uh, correct to make this true. So up there we have alpha, so we can just um, replicate the alpha here. Then we had a t to the alpha minus one. We factored out a t to the alpha. So what we are left with here is a t to the minus one. Then uh, we have a prime t. We didn't factor out, and then b t, oh, I forgot that was a b t to the beta up here. I forgot, let me highlight that, so I forgot that earlier. Here we had b t to the beta, but that's exactly what we factored out. So we are ready already with the green uh, with the green term. What about the gray term? Uh, a t to the alpha we factored out, then we have b beta, and then we are left with b t to the negative one, and b prime t. And then we can factor these things out, that's beautiful. And what we are left with is a fairly simple alpha times a prime over a plus beta times b prime over b. So we started out with the function x being a function of a, t, and b, t, and we ended up with the growth rate of x being a function of the growth rates of a and b, this time pre-multiplied with these factors. So here's a third problem of the same type. And again, we uh, are wondering what the growth rate of this function x is. You should pause the clip and try it yourself or listen to my solution. Of course, you learn more and that's what you want if you do it yourself. So we start out with uh, getting uh, x dot or dx over dt. we we'll start out with the product rule here because we get the as the exponent rule, we get the exponent out and replicate the function times the exponent minus one, that's alpha to the beta minus one. But now we also need to apply the chain rule and find the derivative of this function, at to the alpha plus bt to the beta. 
and that is alpha a t to the alpha minus 1 times a prime t plus beta times b t to the beta minus 1 times b prime t. Again, in here we are applying the chain rule. Let's get the growth rate, which is this derivative with respect to time, and then divide it by x to get the growth rate, and x is of course just what we have up here. a times a t to the alpha plus b t to the beta, and the whole thing to the exponent of alpha plus beta. So how can we simplify this? Perhaps you can see that our denominator here, we almost have a factor here which looks almost like we can cancel it out. The only difference being this exponent. But perhaps you can note that alpha plus beta is the same as alpha plus beta minus 1 plus 1. And here you can see that there's a part which we can cancel out. So all we are left with in the denominator is this factor to the power of 1. So let's see how much we have simplified that. So the a cancelled out, so all we have here is a t to the alpha plus b t to the beta to the power of 1, that is that 1 that was left here, that couldn't be cancelled away. And in the numerator we have the alpha plus beta and the entire term in parenthesis, alpha times uh, a t to the alpha minus 1 times a prime t, but actually I'll leave a little bit of space here because I can already see a little trick we can apply. So times a prime t plus beta times bt to the uh, beta minus 1 and with a bit of space b prime t. So there isn't much we can simplify here, there's just one extra step. In particular, we can print growth rates again. Note that we have this term a t to the alpha minus 1 here. That is really the same as a t to the alpha times a t to the minus 1. Or you could also write that as a t to the alpha over a t. But we'll use that second term, a t to the alpha times a t to the minus 1. So let's replace that term here with what we just noted on the right hand side, a t to the alpha times a t to the minus 1. And we do the same with this b t to the beta minus 1 term. That is the same as b t to the beta times b t to the minus 1. So why did we do this? Well, we did this because uh, we have now in the parenthesis and numerator quite convenient terms. We have, for instance, here a t to the minus 1 times a prime t, and here b t to the minus 1 times b prime t. These are again growth rates, the growth rate of a and the growth rate of b. So this is what we are left with in the parenthesis, alpha times a t to the alpha, and then times the growth rate of a, that's uh, a dot over a, leaving the argument away for simplicity, plus beta times b t to the beta times the growth rate of b, b dot over b, again leaving the argument away for simplicity. So we ended up with the growth rates here again. So what did we do? We had this function x, which is a function of two other functions a t and b t and to get the growth rates of x we ended up with a function of the growth rates of a and 